Abbiamo il piacere grandissimo e l'onore di avere Chris Bowers, l'autore delle musiche di Bridgerton, della serie di cui stiamo parlando nella nuova puntata di Vis a Vis. E accanto a noi abbiamo un altro grandissimo amico, un amico fraterno Fabrizio Mancinelli, che con Chris Bowers eh, ha lavorato in due occasioni come direttore d'orchestra. Lui è un compositore italiano eh, di, residente a Los Angeles, Fabrizio. E ha lavorato con Chris per eh, Green Book, il film con Viggo Mortensen e poi ora in un nuovo, nel film che prossimo che uscirà con le musiche di Chris che è quello su Billy Holiday, giusto Fabrizio? Sì, giusto, Chris, they are saying basically that uh, I'm a friend of theirs, I facilitated meeting you, uh, with you today because I work for you and I conducted, I had the honor of conduct for you the score for Green Book and uh, the United States versus Billy Holiday which is coming out and he introduced uh, having the pleasure and the extreme honor of having you Uh, is one of the uh, foremost composer and the composer for the series Bridgerton of, about which they are talking in their, uh, in their show now. Awesome, thank you. Ok, come avete ben capito, cari nostri affezionati eh, fan di Vis a Vis, eh, ora fa, eh, Fabrizio ci farà da, da traduttore simultaneo con Chris eh, eh, alle nostre domande. Io vi lascio lo, il piacere di, eh, con la prima domanda a Daniela, che farà una domanda un po' più sull'emozionalità di, de, di quello che ha dato Chris con le sue musiche a Bridgerton. So, one second, I will be translating. Daniela is asking you, going to ask you the first question about the emotional role of uh, you, uh, your relationship with you uh, adding emotions to Bridgerton as a series. So, now she's going to ask, I'm going to translate and then you can respond. Io mi immagino che per un compositore l'obiettivo primario sia quello di emozionare il pubblico. Quindi mi chiedevo in, questo, in questa produzione quale sia stata la sua emozione primaria da far arrivare. What has been in this uh, production your primary emotion that you wanted to compel to the audience, that you wanted to pass on to the audience, uh, considering that the main purpose of a composer is uh, uh, giving emotions to the audience? Definitely. Um, I think my first focus for this film, or for this show, was um, the love story between Simon and Daphne, and wanting to create a theme for them that could also exist through all of the ups and downs of their relationship. I think the, the show does a really incredible job of showing the complexity of love and marriage and, and what that takes and the type of work that that takes. And I wanted to try to find a theme that could really show us not only the really amazing highs of those lovely moments, but also the difficult and trying um, uh, lows, but how, how Important those things are to, to get through. Allora, voleva so soprattutto sottolineare i momenti persi, i momenti non trovati nella relazione uh, dei personaggi principali, non solo sottolineare gli alti e i bassi di qualsiasi relazione amorosa, ma sottolineare anche quei momenti nascosti all'interno di, di una relazione. Obiettivo raggiunto, direi, ci è riuscito alla grande. Sì. And you reached the, the goal, they say, for sure. <ride> Thank you. Grazie. Chris, eh, quali sono state le difficoltà maggiori per te a realizzare questa colonna sonora in pieno lockdown e poi tra l'altro durante una pandemia globale, anche con il rapporto con eh, l'orchestra, con i musicisti? What have been the most difficult, uh, the biggest difficulties you encountered in uh, working on a score like that, especially during a pandemic? and uh, with the, your relationship with the musicians, with the orchestra or, and the playing musicians, not only with the compositional part of the work. Yeah, I think that my, I have so much appreciation for all of the musicians in this project. I think that all of the response to the score has been really amazing to feel, but I know for me, it's, um, it really speaks to how much these musicians put into that because we have this score that sounds like it's this huge orchestra at times and that's really only about seven people at home recording themselves laying themselves over and over again and for individuals to take that amount of time to make sure that the music feels as good as possible and for them to put that amount of love into the score when they're playing from home with when they have whatever else they're dealing with in their lives during this crazy time i feel like um it really just goes to 
to the fact that we already have a relationship with these musicians and they they um i'm very lucky that they are excited to play this music and so they they put even more love and energy into it and um and really we couldn't have done that without the musicians paying attention to every detail on their end because i'm not there to to make sure that it sounds right even technically or musically and it every time we got something back from the musicians it was exactly what we needed and that's because every musician took it upon themselves to make sure it was as good as possible and um yeah we couldn't have done that with that without their attention to detail like that. Il uh, Chris um, esprime apprezzamento, un grande apprezzamento nei confronti dei musicisti che hanno suonato la colonna sonora, perché anche nei momenti in cui suona più orchestrale, più ricca, sono generalmente sette musicisti che da casa hanno registrato e leierato più volte le loro parti aggiungendo tutto la, l'amore, un amore ancora più grande, le, l'eccitazione per suona, di suonare su una, uh, su una colonna sonora uh, nuova e uh, non avendo la possibilità di essere Chris vicino ai musicisti, lui uh, ha dovuto fidarsi della, dell'attenzione degli stessi, l'attenzione al dettaglio e ha detto che ogni volta per esempio che tornavano le parti era esattamente quello di cui avevano bisogno, tutto ciò è frutto anche di quella che è una conoscenza da prima e di un affetto, di una stima reciproca tra lui e ovviamente i musicisti che hanno eseguito lo score e hanno realizzato, contribuito a realizzare un lavoro così uh, apprezzato da tutti quanti. Io sono una di quelle che si affeziona ai personaggi nelle serie, quindi mi chiedevo se Chris si fosse ispirato a un personaggio o a qualche personaggio in particolare, se si è affezionato a qualche personaggio. Uh, did you get uh, close, did you get emotionally close to one character in particular or any of the characters? in particular because she says that uh, she usually gets close uh, she gets uh, emotionally close to the characters in a series so she was wondering if you writing for the series were getting close to the characters yeah definitely i think that um a few characters for different reasons from the very beginning eloise is a character that i think just really i had a lot of fun with and liked watching and i think that um you know if if or when I have a daughter, I'd like her to look up to somebody like Louise. <laughs> um, and um, with uh, with Penelope, I really also just loved the fact that we find out at the end who she really is, and, and that was really exciting for me. Um, so both of them, I think I, I was close to in different moments, but throughout the whole show, I really think Simon spoke to me a lot just because I could personally relate to his story in a lot of ways as far as um having I, i love my father very much but we have very uh you know we've had a difficult relationship like like, like i think a lot of fathers and sons and and um and especially being a black man i think that there's a lot that goes into that with black masculinity that that this show i think does a really incredible job of showing h- how that pressure of black masculinity can can um um cause somebody to feel uh very cold and unlovable and 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 um uh, a little rigid and I, I kind of related a lot to those aspects of, of Simon's character, you know, like his, his father. And I relate to this much better than that I can relate to it. <laughs> so, uh, ha detto ovviamente che il personaggio di Eloise lo ha affascinato molto perché anche se avrà una figlia Uh, vorrebbe che avesse come role model una Eloise, una possibile Eloise, poi il percorso di storia ovviamente di Penelope, la sua storia, scoprire verso la, alla fine qual è la sua vera storia, quali sono le sue origini eccetera e Simon ovviamente per questioni anche più personali di identificazione con il personaggio uh, basandosi anche sulla sua esperienza personale perché come in tutte le famiglie c'è sempre un rapporto uh, bello ma anche anche conflittuale con il padre, con il padre e specialmente lui si relaziona a questo essendo una persona di colore avendo appunto questo ruolo della mascolinità e del, dell'esercizio dei propri sentimenti e dell'interscambio dei propri sentimenti con il, con il padre a volte può essere contrastante e conflittuale anche se comunque il suo rapporto con suo papà è nella regola conflittuale non come, come nella serie ovviamente. Senti Chris, Uh, I like uh, Penelope and uh, Eloise. <laughs> Eloise uh, yeah. like uh, um, the character uh, of a Little Women uh, romance. Yeah. yeah. Oh. <laughs> so. 
Eh, come ti sei rapportato con i brani di musica eh, pop rieseguiti dalla Vitaminic String Quartet? Anche perché si amalgamano How... bene con la, con, la, con la tua musica. How was re- your relationship and how was your way of interacting with those rearrangements uh, from Vitaminic, uh, by Vitaminic of the pop music uh, because they integrate so perfectly with your music and your music integrates so perfectly with them in a seamless way. Yeah, thank you. I, I really think that has a lot to do with Alex Patsavas, who is the music supervisor for the show. And she was really incredible in picking those vitamin string quartet pieces. And I think for her, she had a really great thought to have these modern songs represented in a more classical way because she knew that would that would connect with the score. And then she asked me to do one of the arrangements of um, a song by an artist named Celeste. And that was for me inspired by the way the Vitamin String Quartet approaches these modern arrangements and still makes them mus- musicality wise still uh, feel good and, and something that that we can respect as musicians even though it's like um, a, maybe a simpler piece of music and so trying to find a way to do that uh, was something that I definitely found inspiration from from those Vitamin String Quartet things but the, the selection of them was all Alex Patsavas. Chris uh, vuole menzionare Alex Pazzavas, uh, music editor della serie, che ha scelto Vitamin String Quartet e che ha scelto i brani e come spargerli eh, nella serie. E, e, eh, addirittura, per esempio, lui si è ispirato, quando gli è stato chiesto di fare un arrangiamento di un brano, lui pure si è ispirato agli arrangiamenti di Vitamin String Quartet eh, che hanno dato anche un'importanza a dei brani di musica che come compositori classici pot- considereremmo più semplici armonicamente secondo l'andamento, inserendoli in un sistema che invece comunque gli dà una, un leverage, un'importanza più alta all'interno della colonna sonora e quindi lui dice tutto il merito di questa operazione va ad Alex Pazzavas. Alex Pazzavas, Chris? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, okay, exactly. sorry, Ma per caso il brano che, che cita, che menziona Chris, che si rifà un po' allo stile dei Vitamin, uh, Vitamin giusto? String Quartet? Vitamin, vitamin, yeah, vitamin, vitamin Quartet, quart- quart- è Strange? Mm. Uh, is the piece that uh, you were thinking that that you were mentioning that you rearranged uh, is it how is the piece called because you mentioned strange. if it's strange yes strange. yeah okay. that's the piece. Okay. yeah strange. yeah eh, poi lascio un attimo la parola a Daniela ti volevo fare una domanda Chris nel mio prossimo yes. libro che uscirà eh, credo verso marzo dedicato alle migliori colonne sonore delle serie tv da, da, dal 2000 al 2020 io ho inserito tra le serie drammatico sentimentali la tua colonna sonora e perché la ritengo una delle cose più belle scritte negli ultimi anni per la televisione e eh, mi chiedevo ma tu sei giovanissimo tutta questa tua formazione, questa tua, eh, questo tuo modo di scrivere che s- sembra di ascoltare uno dei compositori della vecchia scuola della Golden Age hollywoodiana, da, co- da dove proviene questa tua, questa tua, questo tuo modo di scrivere? He is uh, completing a book that will be released in March about uh, the music scores for TV series of the last 20 years and inserted Bridgerton in the oh. best scores as well for TV and he wants to tell you, you're so young how do you get all this experience uh, when you listen to your music when we all listen to your music me included we feel like uh, the great tradition of hollywood golden age composers of big composer even though you're pretty young and fresh how do you find that how did you explore that where does it come from uh thank you uh yeah thank you i i think that um just studying i, th- I think it's it's nothing it's i feel like it's there's nothing special or magical about it it's just you know so much time spending uh studying things and 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 um i, th- I think the other thing for me personally is how much music has always been uh an emotional thing for me like i started playing piano when i was really young and the reason why i decided to stick with it is because very early on it became the best way for me to express myself. I felt like I couldn't really express myself verbally um, in most of my life, but I could play piano and feel like I was expressing something. And that's also what connects me to so much music that I love is that I can feel what's being expressed emotionally. And so for me, I'm just trying to chase that feeling of capturing an emotion and 
and to find a way to do that i'm just studying all the people that have done that before and all and i think that um i spend far too much time uh frustrated with with um how far i feel from from the greatness of those people that i'm studying but but i feel like the actual path to get there feels very clear to me it's just trying to to study what's what's been there what's been done greatly before and to um try to create something that can make me feel something and if i make myself feel something hopefully other people will feel something too lui ha sempre ha, ha studiato pianoforte da che era bambino e è sempre stato più facile per lui esprimersi emotivamente con la musica con il pianoforte suonando che anche a parole quella è stata una um, una la sua, il, la sua parte più importante di emozione, emotività e linguaggio e poi c'è tanto tanto studio dietro, anche dietro quelle frustrazioni che quando studi i grandi ti rapporti a loro e magari non, non pensi di non essere come loro, però c'è tanto studio e la strada, lui ha detto una cosa molto importante, la strada è molto chiara, la strada verso, per fare questo lavoro bene è conoscere, studiare, studiare e poi cercare di eh, incanalare le proprie emozioni in quello che si dà, perché se si trasmette qualcosa a noi stessi ci sono sono grandi possibilità che riusciremo a trasmetterla anche a qualcun altro attraverso le nostre emozioni. He shares the, uh, the, uh, what you said. <laughs> Thank you, grazie. E Daniela, vuoi dire una, l'ultima domanda tua, Chris? No, non ho altre domande. Ringrazio Chris per la disponibilità e soprattutto um, dalle sue risposte, dal suo sguardo, dal suo sorriso traspare tutta la passione e l'entusiasmo che trovo bellissimo. Vero. Uh, she just said that she's very grateful. She doesn't have any more questions, but she's very grateful for you being here and looking at you. And this is something that I've always felt as well from your eyes, from your smile, from the enthusiasm you speak about this. It's perceived that uh, your entire love for this profession, your enthusiasm that drives you and uh, that you're like honest talking about that. No, thank you so much. Really appreciate that. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> I, can, uh, I can subscribe to that because uh, it's like uh, it's a miracle looking him succeed and it's so beautiful to, to see Chris every every time that I listen to his music. He, it's something that uh, makes me want to listen more and makes me happy to exist. Uh, I just have to have a, a, sh- a shout out to Chris. He wrote an amazing violin concerto, amazing, which I think as a musician is one of the masterpieces of the 21st century of American music. And I hope that Europe will be able to listen to that soon. I was at the premiere and I had goosebumps and I was crying on the second movement. And I really wish everybody to listen to that soon. Thank you so much, Mauricio. I love you, man. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. Thank È stato you, veramente un onore per noi. It's really an honor for them to have you here. Ah, oh, same here. Yeah, thank you. Allora, ti aspettiamo al Bridgeton Season 2. We, we look forward to Bridgeton Season 2. Yes, same here. It'll be a lot of fun. <laughs> <laughs> thank you all so much. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you, Ray. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Grazie, Chris. Text Grazie, you soon. Chris. Ciao. Bye.